Minneapolis. The Conference Superior Purdue Boilermakers go for their 10th straight win. But it won't be easy. The Minnesota Golden Gophers have four-time player of the week, Lindsey Whalen, on their side. Four straight W's at home and a taste for respect next. Valentine's Day night, the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota, where the attention is on Williams Arena. Tonight, it's the Minnesota Golden Gophers against the Purdue Boilermakers in our Big Ten Women's Game of the Week. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Edden with my partner, Tony Resch. Welcome once again to Big Ten Women's Basketball. And what a showdown we've got. The top two teams in the Big Ten, the Boilermakers and the upstart Golden Gophers. Tony, you can't come much closer to a championship game of the Big Ten regular season. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Not only do you have the number one and two teams playing the conference, you have the number one offensive team with Minnesota going up against the number one defensive team in Purdue. Well, all you have to do is look at the Big Ten standings to understand just how big a game this is. Purdue, the defending champions, leading the way at 11 and 2, but there are the Golden Gophers in second at 9 and 3. Well, who would have thought that Minnesota would be in the position that they were and are right now at the beginning of the season? Brenda Oldfield has done a tremendous job with this team. Now, this is a team which won only eight games a year ago. Purdue, on the other hand, used to big games. They played for an NCAA championship last year. Leading the way for the Boilermakers is sophomore Sharika Wright. Well, Sharika Wright is putting up some great numbers. She has been very steady throughout the course of the season. She gets it done on the offensive end. She can pretty much score at will because she's so quick and has a great first step. Then you have Lindsay Whalen from Minnesota who is vying for potential player of the year in the conference. And she is just putting up some great numbers. She gets it done not only on the offensive end, but the defensive end. She gets up in the passing lane. She gets some steals. It goes down and converts, but is extremely unselfish with her teammates. We'll be watching what she does throughout the course of the evening. And we'll also watch a matchup in the post. Mary Jo Noon from Purdue and the freshman sensation Janelle McCarville from Minnesota. Well, Janelle McCarville has only gotten better as the season has gone on. Certainly has accepted the challenge of her coaches at the beginning of the season. Has done a tremendous job. And Mary Jo Noon, she is very difficult to defend. Not only on the offensive end, but on the defensive end. You have to get around her because of her size and she moves very well. Yes, she does. We're going to watch that matchup throughout the course of the evening. Should be a good one here tonight. Purdue can clinch at least a tie for the Big Ten Championship with a win. Minnesota goes after victory number 20. We'll be back in a moment. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Probably like the rest of you. But I've learned a lot about wood floors. Tonight we got batting cage challenge. <laughs> As you can see, the Monopoly board is set up with a lot of hotels. I'm gonna make the pancakes. Grace is gonna make the, the eggs. You two are going to love the cookies. He's gonna check on the homeschool crew and make sure everything's going okay here. Stay strong, parents. We're gonna get this done. All we can control is right now and trying to maximize our days the best we can. I'm just so grateful family, for friends, for loved ones, and the Big Ten. Be a coach. Be a teammate. Be a friend. Be a teacher. Be, be a family. family. We are a team. We are a team. We are a family. We got this. We got this. We can do this. We can do this. and the Minnesota Golden Gophers here tonight. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this game. 
Purdue with its usual starting lineup. The same five they've started in their previous 23 games. Laura Meadows, Sharika Wright, Mary Jo New in the front line, Kelly Kamara, and Erica Vilek in the backcourt. The freshman, McCarville at center for the Golden Gophers. Corin Von Wald and Khadija Anderson, the forwards, Lindsey Whalen and Lindsey Leeser, their three-point ace in the backcourt. Here is Chrissy Curry, now in her third year as the head coach of the Boilermakers, 74 wins, 36-9 and nine in Big Ten play, and 5-0 and oh against the Golden Gophers. And on the other bench, Brenda Oldfield in her first year as the head coach of Minnesota. What a job she's done, 19 and four, a nine and three Big Ten record, and 54 wins in her three seasons as a head coach at Ball State and now here at Minnesota. The 39th meeting between Purdue and Minnesota here tonight, the second of the season. The Boilermakers have won 12 straight, including a victory earlier this year in Mackey Arena, 84-61. And Purdue's won five straight here in Minneapolis. The last time the Gophers beat Purdue was here in Minneapolis. That was on January 8th, 1995. But as you can tell from this crowd, there are an awful lot of people here in Minneapolis who believe that Minnesota can get it done tonight. I think it's probably a blessing in the fact that the uh, sports pavilion actually had a water leak ruin the floor so now Minnesota has been been playing in Williams Arena but because of the crowds there's no way they would fit in the pavilion. Khadija Anderson got it to Von Wald and Minnesota puts it in play. This is Lindsey Whalen. She had 34 against Iowa. That was not her only 30 point performance of the year either. Von Wald from up top dreams it a long deuce and Minnesota leads 2-0. Well, Von Wald, I think, is one of the ones that uh, really has been very subtle in her points and what she contributes, but is a huge force on this team. Here's Vilek into the corner. Kelly Kamara, you know, we talked about right in the open, but Kamara, what a great player she's been for Purdue. And here is a bounce pass inside to Meadows and a three-second violation. Purdue turns it over. Talk about Kamara. First go around between Minnesota and Purdue, Kelly Kamara played Lindsey Whalen and held her to nine points in that game. Whalen, four of 11 shooting in that game, seven turnovers to go along with those nine points. The kick out, the three point shot rims out. Whalen saved it to Sharika Wright. And now Meadows has it. The diagonal pass Kamara. Drives in, under the basket, and a travel call. Second straight, Purdue turnover. Well, Kelly Kamara looking to take the ball to the basket, and that's what they do so well. They attack the basket, not only by the penetration from the perimeter, but also looking to punch it inside. We've talked about Mary Jo Noon and her size and what she can do inside. Well, it's three-point effort. Rims out, McCarville there for the rebound. The putback missed, and Mary Jo Noon clears for Purdue. Boilermakers still scoreless. It's a team which leads the Big Ten in turnover margin, the Boilermakers, but they've already turned it over twice. Bolek. Too far for Noon. Minnesota ball. Now this is where they just have to adjust to the floor. It's a little different playing on this floor. Playing here in Williams Arena, a little elevated floor. Certainly the crowd, they're very used to it because they draw and actually lead the Big Ten in attendance. Reversal leads it, a bounce pass inside. McCarville missed again, and Noon with another rebound. Good defense by Mary Jo Noon, and Janelle McCarville almost got that shot off, trying to seal Noon with that left foot. Purdue has not had a shot yet. They do not have a field goal attempt. Two and a half minutes into this game. They do now. But Meadows missed it. Whalen the other way. Lindsey Whalen's runner rolls in, and it's 4 0 Minnesota. Well, Lindsey Whalen pushed the ball up the floor, slowed it down just a little bit at the three point line to see what she had, and then looked to attack the basket. But that's what Purdue wants to watch and slow down is Minnesota's transition. 
Here's Newland. The turnaround banks in and Purdue's on the board. Mary Jo Noon checks McCarvel over and turns over that left shoulder. And at the other end, McCarvel trying to answer the put back counter. Um, that's what McCarvel has been doing so well the whole season. Erica Vallette called for the foul first of the game, and McCarvel will be at the free throw line. McCarvel, 73% from the line. And she completes the three-point play. Well, McCarvel actually averages seven rebounds a game, sits eighth in the conference. It's a pass contact between McCarvel and Wright as the pass arrives, and McCarvel picks up the first Minnesota foul. Sharika Wright actually avoided a turnover there. Potential steal by McCarvel by moving to the pass. Brenda Oldfield wastes little time substituting Kim Prince. 6'1 junior from Montgomery, Alabama for her freshman McCarvel. Purdue puts it in play in the front court. Collect. Bounce inside. Noon bobbles. Has it ripped away. Minnesota steals it. Wall to Anderson. Anderson looks to go back out with it. Got it to Von Wall. Shot clock at 12 as Von Wall fires. And on the weak side, Anderson saves it, lobs it back in. A leaping grab by Von Wall. Anderson saves it again. Back to Whalen. <laughs> <laughs> She's camping out on the baseline. Whalen tried to drop it down and an offensive foul called. On Lindsey Whalen. Well, the one thing that I think Lindsey Whalen has the tendency to do just a little bit too much is make her penetration just a little bit too deep. Teams know that, and they look to pick up those charges if she can only slow up and, and set up just a little bit before she gets to that defense. Catching on the block, new, but a travel call. I think that was a combination of where, the, where the defense went and on the pass. Official timeout, 15.57 to go first half. The Gophers out to a five-point lead. Oh, okay. I, he was starting, he was counting me down. I didn't hear, so I couldn't hear oh, you talking. Okay. It muted okay. you out, so. No, that's okay. It just, it muted Tony out when you talked. I hear you loud and clear. But yeah, when you I were talking, you. I couldn't hear Tony. So I didn't know she was talking. That's. Uh, yeah, right, right, I got it. What's that? Okay, were you guys saying Mazzani or Mazzani on Sunday? Mazzani. That's, see, that's what I've been saying all along. It is Mazzani. You know, everybody's I mean, I calling her, why is everybody suddenly calling her Mazzani? She was Mazzani last year. Yep. I mean, I even double-checked on it, too. Okay, what are we seeing here? Yeah. Lindsay Whalen's first points of the game as Minnesota's out to a 7-2 lead. Whalen, the second leading score, ninth in the country, 21.9 a game, and you put that together with points off her assists, and you come up with total impact. There's a new stat for you. And you look at the two sophomores in the Big Ten atop the scoring race, and Kelly Mazzani of Penn State and Lindsay Whalen that total impact number, very close. Both have had a, a huge impact on their teams. Well, they really have, and both have worked extremely hard at their game, especially in the offseason. Von Wald to Prince. Prince 
Missed from close in, and Noon grabs it. Well, he talked about Mary Jo Noon's size at 6'5". That was a great move by, Anne, by, by Prince. But she did a great job, Noon did, in getting her hands on the ball. Right with the rebound and the putback. Sharika Wright with her first points. And it's seven to four. Noon already has grabbed three rebounds for the Boilermakers. Prince faces up and drains it. Well, she learned from the last time down. She squared up, looked at Noon. Noon was playing the drive. Nice decision on her part to take the shot. Here's a steal, well in ahead of the pack. Well, that's a combination of anticipation and Purdue not moving to the pass. Laura Meadows waiting on the pass to come to her. Nice job by Lindsey Whalen. Now Noon tries to answer, spins off the rim. Anderson in the corner. Good defense by Kim Prince to move behind on the pass. Caused some problems for Noon. There's Anderson on the drive, and another rebound for Noon. Well, Anderson trying to get Noon on the run a little bit, but still Noon recovering nicely. Elect to Meadows. To the right, Camara for three. Good. Kelly Camara hits the three-pointer, the 130th of her career, and it's 11-7. Well, Kamara did a nice job calling for the ball. She wanted the shot. She knew she was open. Here's Leeser. Minnesota's three-point ace. Anderson. Prince couldn't get it to fall, but drew the foul. Mary Jo Noon picked up the foul. That was a nice pass inside. And actually, Prince, getting behind the defense, slid right into the passing lane. Minnesota did a nice job of seeing her reading it. She went behind the defense, and actually, Prince did a great job of coming down with the ball. So Prince at the line, 53% foul shooter, but in Big Ten play, 77%. And she improves on that. Into the ball game for the Boilermakers, Emily Heikis, freshman from Palos Hills, Illinois. Stag High School. There you see the numbers on Prince. Her second attempt is good. It's 13 to 7, Minnesota. Boilermakers push it down in a hurry. Right. They move it around. Vallet in the lane. Hike is the rebound. Her shot blocked. I think Prince got a hand on it. And here's Minnesota the other way. Bonwald. Screen by Prince. Horrible. Battling hard for the rebound. Vallette comes away with it. Numbers for Purdue. And Anderson poked it away. But there's Camara for three. Missed it. And Whalen on the run the other way. One on two. Throws up the shot. Got it. What a shot by Whalen. Yeah, Vallette actually tried to cut off that drive. Bumped her just a little bit on the way up. Both teams really pushing the ball up and down the floor. See Whalen, again, once again off that hesitation, she slows up and accelerates so well. It's a little crossover there, a little hesitation into that crossover. Nice job on the finish. So Whalen, a chance here for a three-point play for Minnesota. Lindsey Whalen, 74% foul shooter. Seven points now for Whalen and a nine point gopher lead. Minnesota playing here at home, eight and one. That's including a couple of wins on this floor at Williams Arena. Number two, Laura Meadows. As Meadows scores for Purdue. Well, Laura Meadows. Oh, Kelly Camara. Camara and McCarville collided, and Camara shaken up. You know, that's a combination of your teammates not calling out the pick because McCarville sets that pick out top every time coming down the floor. There it is. Oh, boy. 
looks like her head went right into McCarvel's shoulder. She's lucky to get up off that one. But Laura Meadows has really done a nice job throughout the course of the season. Once again, very similar to Von Wald. Great contributor, a little subtle in their points, but huge impact players. Aaron McCarvel battle for it. Heikus intercepts. And the lead pass deflected. Here's Whalen. Lindsay Whalen now with nine. Well, she, that's what she does best is play the passing lanes. For Minnesota, it's not so much about playing the number one team in the conference right now. It's more of a rematch and a little bit of a payback, so to speak, from their last outing. And there's a deflection, Von Wald. Got it. And a foul called. A chance for a three-point play here for Minnesota once again. They've already converted two of them. Well, Minnesota's doing a nice job playing the passing lanes out of that one-to-two zone. Von Wall this time getting her hands on it. Look at the body control and the finish right at the end. I think Von Wall enjoyed that one. Well, Von Wald, a transfer from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Second team All MCC player. Von Wald missed the free throw. Ike and Meadows battle for it, and Purdue comes away with it. The first miss by the Gophers from the line. 11.40 to go in the half. Minnesota off to a good start here. Here's Meadows on the drive, high off the glass, missed. There's Von Wald on the run. A little too strong. And Purdue with a rebound. Well, not a bad move by taking it over to that left side with a little bit of a reverse. A lot of teams have problems rebounding out of the zone defense. Minnesota doing a very nice job of keeping Purdue off of the glass. Foul called. On the Golden Gophers, on uh, Kim Pritz. And we have a timeout, 11-10 to go here in the first half. Fans of Williams Arena on their feet, 20-9 Minnesota. Hey, we got a great game here. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Hey, boy, this place pretty good crowd <laughs> and they're into it you know I, a little different from doing the games like last year in the sports pavilion oh yeah you know, but even at Penn State last weekend the, I mean the crowd was pretty much dead yeah of course Penn State wasn't playing well Absolutely. Pavilion only held like 5,000, didn't it? Something like that. The broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Fox Sports Net by the Big Ten Conference and a reproduction, a rebroadcast without the expressed written consent of Fox Sports Net and the Big Ten is strictly prohibited. We're at Williams Arena in Minneapolis. Dave Edit and Tony Resch with you. 11-10 to go into the first half. Minnesota leading Purdue. 20-9. Minnesota with a foul. Purdue with the ball. Here's Meadows. A three-pointer. Good. By Laura Meadows. 45% from three point land in conference play leads the league. And she drains another one. She actually has had three double doubles on the season. 
Jackson. Back out to Leeser, trying to answer. Out of bounds to Purdue. Lindsay Leeser, actually 86% of her shots, her field goal attempts, are from beyond the three-point arc. In fact, she shoots better from three point land than she does from the floor overall. Lindsay Whalen, after a brief rest back in, Eva Hemberg, number three, is in now for Minnesota. The turnaround by Noon won't go. There's Prince for the rebound. Uh, Mary Jo Noon did a nice job sliding up the lane, getting Kim Prince on that left shoulder. Nice entry feed inside. Unfortunately for Noon, the ball not going in. Gives it back to Hemberg. Hemberg from Stockholm, Sweden. As is Khadija Anderson. Takes the shot there. But a three second violation called. And it's Purdue ball. Lapa well, Hemberg has been doing a nice job for the team. Comes in off the bench, contributes. Now, you know, the thing that uh, is interesting from a point guard standpoint in two games, she actually dis dished out eight assists with zero turnovers. Not half bad. Noon in the block. Missed. Anderson. Again, Purdue with some good looks inside. Ball not falling, but Minnesota still limiting Purdue's second chance opportunities. Anderson lost the ball. Sharika right on the run. It's a foot race. Right knocked down, out of bounds, Minnesota ball. Well, you like to see that. Lindsey Whalen helping Sharika right up off the floor. Two sophomores, two of the super freshmen in this league. Minnesota ranked 15th in the nation this week. Purdue, the number seven in the polls. Whalen saves it, then tied up. Beth Jones snuck in there for the Boilermakers, and they get the ball. Nine minutes to go as Camaro brings it into the front court. They go into Noon once again, and she bangs it in. Mary Jo Noon, they've been trying. Four points for Noon. It's a six-point Minnesota lead. Well, Noon's comfortable turning over that left shoulder. She checked her right shoulder, came back over the left. Ball loose in the corner. Out of bounds. Minnesota ball. Wright is right spending a lot of time on the floor here in the first half. Well, it's trying to come up with those loose balls, but that's a couple of past three possessions. Minnesota having a difficult time getting into their offense. Twice slipping, and that time a bad pass inside or even a mishandle. 17 to shoot as they inbounded. Anderson has it taken away. Nice move inside, but great contest. There's Wright. And the foul call. Sharika Wright. It's just a matter of Minnesota not getting back into the transition defense soon enough, sitting back a little bit on their heels, and Wright just sliding in. She thought she was open. Nice pass inside. Nice feed from Camara. And Sharika Wright at the line. Right, 23 points the first time these teams met. She had nine of 13 free throws in that game. And the ball game for the Boilermakers is Lindsey Hicks, sophomore from Lebanon, Ohio. Number four, Laura Meadows will get a rest. And suddenly, the Boilermakers have cut it to three. Minnesota has not had a basket since the 11:51 mark. We have 8:15 to go now, and Camaro with the steal. And Camaro on the run. And Purdue will set up. Beth Jones has it stripped, and here's Whalen a foot race against Hicks. Whalen counted. Lindsey Whalen. Uh, both teams right now. Both possessions taking the ball right out of each other's hands. But Lindsey Whalen comes up with the loose ball, brings it down. You can see she comes in with that right hand, comes back with the left. 
great body control. She come with that right. Going up with that left. Wellen with her third steal of the game. And we're only 12 minutes in. The free throw is good. She's into double figures for the 23rd time, the 47th in the last 49 games. And Minnesota leads Christy Curry and Purdue by six. We'll be back. How about it? Do you believe that two weeks from tonight? I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be here the night before. Are you? So you're coming in on Thursday? I'm coming. Well, flying to a charter back after the game up here Wednesday night uh -huh. into Midway. So okay. I may just, if I'm feeling good, I may just try to drive in Wednesday night so I'm there. How long of a drive is it? From there, well, from, you know, that's south side. It'd be 11 o'clock at night, so, you know, I would imagine it'll be two and a half, mm -hmm. probably. Real quickly, we chartered uh, the other night on one of the Southeast Airlines, one of the planes that carries the professional athletes. Over the wide seats. Oh, my that, gosh. Isn't that great? I'm telling you, Dave, my feet didn't even touch the floor. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm, I felt like Lily Tomlin, you know, when she had that big, you know, the big oversized chair, air, you know, TVs and stuff right there. I'm like, oh, my gosh. This year's Big Ten Conference Tournament tips off Thursday, February 28th, two weeks from tonight at Conseco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. For tickets, contact your local Ticketmaster or Big Ten Ticket Office or visit Ticketmaster.com. Can you believe it? Two weeks away from the Big Ten Tournament, we'll bring you all the action from Indianapolis beginning with three games on the 28th. We hope to see you there. Here's Meadows, double pumps. Lays it in. Kelly. Laura Meadows now with seven. Yeah, Kelly Kamara did a nice job of drawing the defenders and a nice pass inside to Meadows, but Meadows sealing the defender on her back. At the other end, long deuce by Corin Von Wald. So Minnesota answers and maintains a six point lead inside of seven and a half minutes. She's certainly capable of scoring some points again while she was at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee averaged 11 points a game. Mara drives in now puts it up. And a foul called. And Von Wald, yeah and Von Wald here is 12 and a half a game so she's and it's well getting it done on the defensive end too. Ranked eighth in steals in the conference. Prince called for the foul. Camara, 71% free throw shooter at the line. Into the ball game, Khadijah Anderson returning, replacing Prince. Kelly Camara, member of a senior class that's recorded 108 wins. If they can win four more, and you somehow suspect that they're going to find four more wins, it's going to be the winningest senior class ever in the Big Ten. That's saying something. Uh, it really is. And again, that goes back to the tradition and the pride that every player coming into the program has. 5 21, Minnesota. Shot clock down to 10. Whalen goes to work. Lindsey Whalen takes it in. Missed it. The rebound out of bounds. Minnesota ball on a fresh 30-second clock. Well, Lindsey Whalen set that up by a little in and out action, a little hesitation, fake cross. Got the defenders going to the right, so she comes back. Fortunately for her, not going in, but McCarvel right there. Not able to secure the rebound, though. Right out to guard Von Wall. Leaves her in the corner. Now Anderson will put it up. Carvel jumps in 
for the offensive rebound. And there's Lindsey Whalen. Once again, Janelle McCarvel in position for the offensive rebound. McCarvel actually set that up, faked the pass out. Whalen stepping right in. At the other end, Noon answering for Purdue. She's got six. A good high-low look by Meadows inside to Noon. Now Von Wald from outside and right on the weak side. Controls for Purdue. Camara to the baseline. Back to Meadows. And Black will reset here with 5.40 to go. There's Camara. Underneath. Somehow got it to noon. Eight to shoot. Meadows. The pull up off the front of the rim. Vilek chases it down in a fresh shot clock for Purdue. Now it's nice to see Erica Vilek getting pretty much back to full force, struggling from an ACL injury a year ago. The entry pass poked away. Von Wald's pass deflected, but Whalen tracks it down. Anderson. All the way under, got it to Von Wald on the wing. The skip pass, Leeser open for three, missed it. There's Von Wald for the rebound. Now Minnesota's done a nice job of attacking the offensive boards. No well, rebounds right now, we're even at 14 apiece. And a three second violation, third of the game, second on the Gophers. Shot selection on a hole for both teams has been very good. Heikis returns, replacing Noon. Field goal percentage Purdue shooting at 47% on the season. They're actually 45%. Minnesota a little under that at 39%, but first in the conference in field goal percentage at 51%. Minnesota the edge in turnovers here. Leaping catch. Meadows for three. Bounds out. There's Wright. Muscled it back up. Put it back up again and drew the contact. Well, this is a Minnesota team, which is third in the nation in field goal percentage. For them to be shooting 39%, I think, speaks volumes about this Purdue defense, which leads the Big Ten in field goal percentage defense. And again, not only is it the on-ball defense, but it's how they move. And you have the presence inside of Hikus as well as Mary Jo Noon. That's a very big deterrent. And even Laura Meadows. Laura Meadows sits at 6'3". Right, looking to make it a three-point game. Missed them both. Whalen going coast to coast. Uses the glass and puts Minnesota up six. I thought that was a great no call by the official. Little contact being made, but didn't displace either player. Good body control on the finish by Whalen. 16 now for Lindsey Whalen. 16 of their 29 points. The skip pass deflected out of bounds by Khadija Anderson. And we'll have an official timeout with 3.45 to go in the first half. Lindsey Whalen in Minnesota leading Purdue by six. can't hear you. That's much better. Okay. Tonight it's an equal battle winners on both sides of the arena. Congratulations, Hooper fans. 
and thanks to Holiday Station Store. Coming up at halftime, we'll have our coach's corner. We'll hear from both Christy Curry and Brenda Oldfield on which teams might be sleepers at the Big Ten tournament in two weeks. We'll also have our Big Ten scouting report and first half stats and highlights. We've got a good one. We expected one. There's Brenda Oldfield. She's got this place rocking, doesn't she? The barn. <laughs> They've seen some great crowds in this place over the years. And some raucous crowds. There, they were into it tonight, no question. Was Kamara on the drive, off the glass. Uh, Kelly Kamara did a nice job taking the ball to the basket, but Janelle McCarville coming in from that help side, taking the charge. Kamara uses the screen, goes right in. Look at McCarville stepping right in there. Great defense. Kamara now will go out of the ball game. They're picking up the foul. Field goal shooting. Purdue at 43%. Minnesota 41%. There's Leeser in the corner. Ten to shoot. Anderson. Split the defenders. Six to shoot. Five. Four. Well, it'll put it up for three. And spins it in. As the shot clock runs down, Whalen, great composure, was able to get that shot off with a nice contest by Sharika Wright. 19 for Lindsey Whalen. And we still have nearly three minutes to go into the half. Vilek, the pull up to the left side is good. A smooth jumper by Vilek. And again, it's nice to see her going down with that ACL injury a year ago in the Mideast region, comes back, worked extremely hard to get herself back, and she's really starting to play yourself back into shape and getting a little more practice time and doing a nice job running the point. No look shovel to the baseline. High shot by Anderson finds the mark and it's 34-25 and a timeout. Timeout Purdue. And once again, Lindsay Whalen, very unselfish and very smooth in her dish off. DJ Anderson, MVP with the Swedish national team. You mentioned Erica Vilek with her rehab, her battle back for the ACL injury. We talked to Coach Christy Curry about that. It's just amazing to see her go down at the point in time that she did. And um, that's one of the reasons why we had a chance to play for a national championship was her play throughout the season got us to that point. And to know that she can play in the Final Four was just more than hard for us to all sit and watch and I know really hard on her. She's had a hard time coming back. It's taken a lot longer. Her body, we've been told, heals at a slower rate than normal. But she's at a point now where she's much better. She's getting more reps in practice. And she's been the difference the last month of the season for us. That's why we're where we're at. And um, she's doing some great things for our team right now. And so is Mary Jo Noon, who banks that one in. Her eighth point, loser for three. Beth Jones takes it off the floor. 34-27. Minnesota leads it inside of two minutes now. I was going to say that box out by Beth Jones actually saved Minnesota from coming up with another rebound. Khadija Anderson was trying to get in position. Right missed the three-pointer. McCarville to Whalen. Whalen called for the travel. Now, very good on-ball defense by Sharika Wright. Lindsey Whalen trying to set it up to make a one-on-one -on -one move inside, but nice defense by Wright. So Purdue brings it up inside of 90 seconds now for the half. Three-point shooting. Not a huge factor in the game so far. The high-low off the noon, off the backboard, taken by Purdue, by Minnesota. Brent Oldfield was actually trying to get a quick timeout. 
Shot deflected underneath, out of bounds. Minnesota ball with 59.7. Interesting. I was going to see if she was going to call the timeout before the inbounds, but wanted to, the team to run a certain play here. Shot clock down to six. Whalen measures a three. Good again. Well, because Lindsay Leeser came over, the defense, they were anticipating Whalen coming off the screen, but instead decides to shoot with a little jab and shoot. Lindsay Whalen, 22 points. Anderson saves it to Whalen. Yeah, there, Brent Oldfield got the timeout that she wanted. Now it's going to utilize the clock here, 32 seconds. Where do you go for all the latest and greatest information on your favorite Big Ten team or athlete? Next time, log on to www.bigten.org. You'll be able to find statistics from this game and all the Big Ten action. And again, we'll have our Big Ten scouting report coming up at halftime. Minnesota will have 30. Well, there are 32.4 seconds remaining. So there is a about a two and a half second differential, but. You see the key numbers. Minnesota averages about 80 points a game, and the Gophers turn it over. And now Purdue can play for the final shot with 28.6. Now that's an unfortunate situation right there. Brent Oldfield calling a timeout, obviously wanted to execute an offensive set. Her team not responding to that. You see the shooting percentages barely even. Ten seconds. Sharika Wright looking for noon. Six seconds. Out it goes Vilek. Meadows open for three. Missed it. Whalen has it. And the first half has come to an end. And a standing ovation for Lindsey Whalen and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. When they lead at halftime, they're 14-0, and, and they lead the defending Big Ten champion Boilermakers by 10 here at the half, 37-27. to Back with our halftime activities in a moment. to the races, oh. Hubbard, connects! Scalia off the dribble, she finishes! Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities. Discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Last time Purdue trailed at halftime four games ago at East Lansing. They trailed Michigan State at halftime and then outscored the Spartans 50 to 32 in the second half. And here they're trying to battle from behind. Right away, the tie up, Purdue gets the ball. Well, Mary Jo Noon playing right behind. Anderson trying to face up, but presented the ball right to Noon. Kelly Camara, 
Sharika Wright. Alec inside. Meadows short jumper won't go. And a foul on the rebound. Laura Meadows with a good look at the basket. Minnesota doing a nice job on the box out. Talked about the Purdue outscoring the Gophers 29 to 10 in the last 10 minutes. Back in West Lafayette on January 10th. The final score is 84-61. Von Wall from the weak side. The Von Wall now with eight points in the game, and it's 39-27. This is the largest lead of the night for Minnesota. Well, the numbers were very even in the first half, except for steals, and another one right there by Lindsey Whalen. Whalen against Meadows, scoops it in. And it's a 14-point Minnesota lead. Well, that'll be eight points off of fast break opportunities for Lindsey Whalen. Was coming off of steals. That's number 10 for Minnesota. 24 points in the game for Lindsey Whalen. She had only averaged 10 points a game in her previous three games against Purdue in her career. It's shot taken under the basket by Von Wald. Minnesota has come out started the second half a little bit like they started the game. Coming out very composed. And this time they turn it over. Von Wald stepped on the baseline. And Von Wald trying to make that penetration there. Good defense though. I think the defense may have forced her out of bounds a little bit. Fourteen point Minnesota lead. Malek missed it. Anderson has it. But not a bad shot. She just short-armed it. Whalen spinning, fade away. Nearly got it. And then a foul as Sharika Wright <laughs> retreated with the ball <laughs> on Lindsey Whalen. <laughs> Looking for her fourth steal of the night. Yeah, a little incidental contact. Watch Whalen set this up. She'll come in, spin. She loves that spin move. But look how she avoids the defender. I think she probably would have liked to use the glass that time, but didn't quite have the angle to do so. Purdue has not scored since the 2.07 mark of the first half. And they'll come away empty this time. McCarville nearly had it poked away by Meadows. Anderson cut off under the basket. Drive. Up top, the three-pointer won't go. Well, Lindsey Whalen in position to come down with the rebound. Sharika Wright kind of took that right out of her hands, though. Bullock. This time she banks it in. Bullock off the dribble. Likes to double pump a little bit. Last time down the floor, she was short-armed it just a little bit, but that time got enough loft on it and used the glass well. First points of the second half for the Boilermakers. It took them about three minutes to get them. It was tipped by the lack out of bounds. For Minnesota, number 10, the Kim Prince. A little miscommunication there in that half court set. A little mistiming there. Spacing was a bit of an issue. Leeser sits down. You saw Prince check in along with number 20 for Minnesota, Leslie Hill, sophomore from Chicago, Washington High School. Von Walls for three. Off the rim, out of bounds. Purdue ball. Well, Hill just coming in the game, put herself in position right there on the offensive boards. She was right there, just not able to secure the rebound. missed it and there's Hill she wraps it up again nothing wrong with that shot just a little short on it a little late on the release 
Tactical foul called. I know Christy Curry talking to June Porteau going down on the offensive end. Certainly something was exchanged going down the defensive end. So that's going to put Lindsey Whalen at the free throw line. For sports comedy, commentary, and constantly updated scores and highlights, don't miss the best damn sports show period. Weeknights at 8 on Fox Sports Net. Add two more to Lindsey Whalen's total by virtue of the technical foul. And... The Boilermakers fall a little bit farther behind. 42-29, 15-57 to go. Is it, is it 42 or 43? They got 42. Okay, on the scoreboard now they have 42. They, I don't know what Christy Curry was upset about. Something down here, because when they were going down on the offensive end, she had some words with June. It's 43-29. Now up on the board, they have 43-20. I think it is 43 because it was 41-27. Yeah. We'll get the score right one of these days. I'm telling you, when I kept score when I was in high school for the grade school games, I couldn't. Minnesota leads Purdue. It's 43-29. Lindsey Whalen with those free throws adding to her total 26 points in the game now. And the eight point shy of her career high. Diving into press row. <laughs> it's nice of her to adjust our microphone yes, after did. she knocked it out of position. <laughs> Minnesota. Great hustle. Right there she. And she adjusts the mic. Nice save there, Tony. <laughs> she adjusts the mic for us. Ellen <laughs> leans in, missed the shot, and she's hurt. Now she's just slow getting up. Boy, it looked like she came down on. Came down funny as she hit that off-balance shot, but she, three, she is walking a little gingerly over to the bench. Here comes Ebba Hemberg. Again, Ebba Hemberg actually teammates with Khadija Anderson. And they played for the Swedish national team. Camara to right. Hasn't been able to put a run together yet in the first five minutes of the half. This time, Sharika Wright going to work in the paint. And a foul the ball. Minnesota personal number 20, Leslie Hill. That's her first, the second foul on Minnesota. A reminder, Fox Sports coverage of Big Ten Conference women's basketball continues Sunday. We'll be in Happy Valley, Illinois. Takes on Penn State in Chicago. You can see that one live at noon. Check local listings for air times outside Chicagoland. A week from tonight, we'll be in Evanston, Northwestern, and Michigan. We'll close things out with our wild card game. We'll close out the regular season coverage right back here. A week from Sunday, the 24th, Minnesota against Michigan State.
Meadows working on a contact lens. Penn State has beaten Michigan State tonight, 62 to 59. There's the final score. So Penn State now nine and four into the conference. Northwestern looking to win for the first time, leading at Wisconsin at halftime, 39-21. Michigan in front of Iowa at halftime, 39-35. Boy, that Northwestern-Wisconsin scores a surprise. And the thing is, is Northwestern really has been in every game, yep. playing very competitively. And, and actually gave Wisconsin a very tough game in Evanston earlier this year. Well, when they played Michigan State, we had that game, and it was a four-point ball game very late into the game. Oh, nice cut by Prince. McCarville, great vision. Good strong basket cut by Prince. All right, Lindsey Whalen back in for Hemberg. Kamara now with three fouls. Carvel catching, tried to drop it off, and it's intercepted by Wright. Well, being a little too unselfish, she should have put the ball up. Green calling for it inside instead. They're working around the perimeter. It's deflected, saved in the corner. Wright has it, 10 to shoot. Velek, a three, but they whistled it off. It was a foul called. On Lindsay Leeser. Well, That's Kelly Cabrera saving that ball from going out of bounds on the left side. Brought it back in bounds, and Purdue just going right at Leeser. Meadows catches, shoots, collect the rebound, and another foul on Leeser. Well, that time off the long rebound, Minnesota not boxing out. Allowed Select to go in there and get the rebound. Back comes Ebba Hemper. And unfortunately for Lindsay Leeser, that's two back-to-back -back fouls for her. Kamara. That was the high low Mary Jo New converts. And Purdue within 11. Oh, nice passing by Purdue. Minnesota, though, a little flat footed in that defensive possession. Whalen drives on right. The ball was kicked. They'll recycle the shot clock. Still, Purdue has managed only five points here. In the first six plus minutes of the second half. Prince Purdue's picking up the defensive pressure now. And they can do that extremely well. They hold their opponent to actually 60 points a game. Leads the Big Ten, 35th best in the nation. Well, right there, that's just a great defensive possession by Purdue. All right, Purdue brings it up. They can cut it to single digits. And a travel call on Mary Jo New. Good defense by Kim Prince. Well, and it was, and actually Prince released the contact when Mary Jo Noon received the ball. She was trying to get a little bit closer to the defender. And because of doing so, didn't put the ball on the floor and move that left foot. Door Whalen. Oh, great back door by Lindsay Whalen. Set up Sharik Wright. Coming hard up to the wing. Just said, oh, great back door. Actually helps side defense not there. They're playing up a little bit high. And what about the finish by Whalen? At the line for Minnesota 13, oh. and, and no, no change of express, expression on Whalen's face. 29 points for Lindsay Whalen. She is 11 of 16 from the floor. 
Coach Beth Burns actually asked if it, uh, Beth Burns from Ohio State asked if Whalen ever smiled. She said only after the game. High off the glass, Black with a nice move, and it's 46-34. It's good to see Erica Vilek attacking the basket. Again, gaining more confidence as that knee gets stronger. Anderson's 15-footer off the back rim. Knocked in the air, noon control. Purdue can get to within 10. Kamara spot up three. Short. Von Wald, right place, right time. Vilek steals. Shovels to right. Right. Missed the shot, but drew the foul. Well, it's not a bad foul by Lindsey Whalen. She tried to hustle back. But what about the defense of Erica Malek knocking the ball loose? It's the third foul on Lindsey Whalen. Five now in Minnesota. And Sharika Wright, two for five from the line tonight. Right now, Purdue not really getting their legs underneath them on their shots. They've been short. Kelly Kamara on her release on, from that three-pointer. A little bit late on her release. Didn't get her legs underneath her enough. Timing was off a little bit on that release as well as right. The time coming back. Nice job. Sharika Wright. That one for her points. Noon deflected it, I think, but it went in anyway. Prince with the basket. Well, the best thing that Kim Prince did in that situation was not put the ball on the floor. 12 minutes to go, and a high-low pass out of bounds. Well, Eric Vilek wanted that pass to go. Time out. 48-35, Minnesota. I'll tell you what, it's been tremendous and uh, you know the buzz that's been out there that's been created that you know actually people are out there excited and talking about women's basketball and excited for the University of Minnesota and uh, I'll tell you what, it, it's the hottest ticket in town and we're excited to uh, be able to um, play and, and draw so many people to be able to come out and, and see this team play. I want to hit my talk back. Did it come across the air? I didn't hear you. What did okay. you say? Did, did you hear that, Jim? I was going to ask you a question, uh, whether or not we had a, a, could get a replay. I hit my talk back, and I could hear myself loud and clear. I thought it came over the air, and I stopped. That's when you looked at me in motion to keep going. No, I just. OK, because that's what I want to talk to him. And it came across. I'm like, oh, man, because you were talking. Well, maybe it. What's that? OK. Minnesota's excited about these Gophers. Coach Brenda Oldfield talking about the buzz. I'll tell you what, it's been tremendous. And, uh, you know, the buzz that's been out there, that's been created, that, you know, actually people are out there excited and talking about women's basketball and excited for the University of Minnesota. And uh, I'll tell you what, it, it's the hottest ticket in town, and we're excited to uh, be able to um, play and, and draw so many people to be able to come out and, and see this team play. Well, they've really energized this program. 11,389 here to see them play Indiana. And actually, they could not have managed to squeeze that many people had they been playing that game in the sports pavilion. Well, they wouldn't fit. The water break had just happened. Yeah. Now Prince, tough shot over noon, missed. Meadows picks it up, 11 and a half to go. 13 point Minnesota lead. A win tonight would give Minnesota 20 wins for the first time since 1983. And that's the only time in NCAA play that they've done it. And they're ranking in the top 25. Meadows shot is short. 
Again, Ember. Again, shot selection for Purdue is good. Their release is just a little late, and that's why they're short on their shots. Ember trying to bounce it back inside to Kadesha Anderson. And the foul call. There you see the numbers. How about that? The greatest, greatest turnaround this year in the nation from 8 and 20 to 19 and 4. This was a team that was 1 and 15 in the Big Ten a year ago. And they've already won, what, as many games in the conference this year as they won the last six years combined? I believe that's the number. We're averaging nearly 20 more points a game. It's not a question of them getting lucky winning a couple games. This is a very good team. Camara the steal. Kelly Camara, big play for Purdue. And that's just per persistence on Purdue's part. That's twice that Minnesota's come down with the rebound. And then right fouls. That's it. Minnesota comes down with the rebounds, and Purdue is right there poking the ball out. Sharika Wright with her second foul. Sixth team foul here on Purdue. Beth Jones in for the Boilermakers. Leck goes out. There's Hemberg taking a seat. Marvel is back in, and Lindsay Whalen back in. She's got the ball. Right out to guard Whalen. And to shoot. Here's Prince. She'll put it up. Bangs off the rim, out of bounds, Purdue ball. Well, what Minnesota needs to continue to do is attack the offensive glass. Because what they can't do is exchange baskets or allow Purdue to get a couple of opportunities on the offensive end. Lindsey Hicks checks in for Purdue. Well, one thing that Minnesota has done tonight, they led from the opening minute of the game, and they have led it all the way. They have not let Purdue pull even. There you see the field goal shooting, 40% for Minnesota, 39% for the Boilermakers. In and out, McCarville clears. They pass Whalen on the run, Whalen! Lindsey Whalen, 31 points! Lindsey Whalen going right at Beth Jones with the in and out dribble. Does not allow Purdue to get set to pick up the charge. Timeout. 9.18 to go. And the Golden Gophers reopen a 13-point lead. That's one point shy of their largest margin of the night. And Lindsey Whalen, 31 points tonight. Take a look at the last play here. She takes it end-to-end. Talk to Coach Brenda Oldfield about her sophomore star, Lindsey Whalen. Just her competitiveness. I mean, she's by far one of the most competitive players I've ever coached. I mean, quickest first step going to the basket. She can shoot the three. And then you look at her leadership skills. I mean, she's able to include everyone, you know, into the ball game. She rebounds. She can um, feed her teammates with assists. She's just a complete all-around player. This is her third 30-plus game of the year. She had 32 against Wisconsin. She had 34 at Iowa earlier this month. And tonight, 31, and we still have 9.18 to go. Well, she was actually recruited by Iowa as, and chose Iowa over, or she, excuse me, chose Minnesota over Iowa as well as some other schools. And, and certainly for Minnesota, <laughs> they're glad she did so. Four times Big Ten Player of the Week, the only player to earn that distinction. There you see the COSADA, which is the Sports Information Directors Organization, their nominees. Khadija Anderson, 
Lynn Von Wald, Lindsay Leeser, and of course Lindsay Whalen. Right. Shrieker right with a great move, put the ball on the floor twice. Came back using the glass. Whalen at the other end, her shot hit the bottom of the backboard. She drew the foul. Again, nobody stops the ball. She's coming down the floor and again hesitating so well. Sets up the defense. Help side defense not rotating over. This year's Big Ten Conference Tournament tips off Thursday, February 28th at Kinseco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. For tickets, contact your local Ticketmaster or Big Ten Ticket Office or visit Ticketmaster.com. Lindsey Whalen, perfect from the line, six for six. Whalen, 33 points, one shy of her season and career high. Well, I talked about her ranking being at number nine in the nation. Points per game, she's first in field goal percentage amongst the guards. Beth Jones for three, got it. Her first points of the game, Jones, sophomore from Mainville, Ohio. Tied for the Boilermaker lead in three-point percentage. Drains that one. Beth Jones really worked on that outside shot in the offseason. Purdue ball. And now Minnesota ball. Well, Von Wald off the penetration. Mary Jo Noon right there. Blocks the ball out of bounds. Deflects the ball, I should say. Laser being pressured. Got it back to Whalen. To the weak side, McCarvel. And McCarvel draws the foul on Mary Jo Noon. Well, Whalen really set that up. Again, cutting back so quickly. And McCarvel with the off-ball movement coming back to the ball. See right there, she moves to the ball. Nice passing between Whalen and McCarvel. Three on noon. Four points now for McCarvel. Meadows back in. Right and noon go out. Belek in along with Meadows, Camara, Hicks, and Jones for Purdue. Four points for McCarvel in the game. Whalen battling for it. Jones ties her up. Possession arrow. Minnesota. Uh, good defense there by Purdue. Beth Jones right in position. Little double team. Is able to tie up the ball. 11 point Golden Gopher lead. And an offensive foul called as Beth Jones took a hard tumble. They had Leeser open on the wing behind the three-point line. I don't think that was intentional. She tried to set the pick, but just moved right into it a little late. These teams are playing hard. And why not with what's at stake? Meadows on the drive to the rim. Nine for Meadows. Eight minutes to go. And... Purdue finally gets it down to single digits. McCarville backing on Meadows. Turns. Foul call. Well, right there with the entry feed inside by Whalen to McCarville. Loud for a one on one for McCarville to go, work, go to work against Meadows. So Meadows called for her fourth foul. And McCarvel right back at the line. And the ball game comes Emily Heikis replacing Meadows. Heikis from Stag High School. Delos Hills, Illinois is her hometown. Carville makes one of two. And it's back to a 10 point lead. 54 44, 7 47 to go.
Okay. Look at those numbers. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry, I stepped on you a couple times tonight. It's okay. I'm used to it, trust me. <laughs> not from you. I'm used to it from some other partners. Yeah. Well, I try, not, I try to time it, yeah. you know? Well, it's, you know, it's tough. It's noisy in here. We both have a lot of stuff you want to get in. What's that? Please. You guys are dynamite. Match up. The University of Minnesota Cheer Squad and the University of Minnesota Net Band. Fans go is looking for some rowdy Subway Super fans. So make some noise and you can be chosen as the Subway Row of the Game. So make some noise, Minnesota. Receive a coupon for a free sub courtesy of Subway. Fans, tonight's official game attendance is 8,639. We talked about our key matchup at the top of the telecast. Mary Jo Noon, 10 points, but only two here in the second half. Janelle McCarville, five points, but ten rebounds, just three shy of her season and career high. It's a ten-point Minnesota lead. Purdue gets to cut into it as Malek brings it up. 7.40 to go. Lindsey Hicks drives in. Got it. Lindsey Hicks. So Lindsey Hicks does a nice job putting the ball on the floor, pulls up off the jumper, nice little fake, gets McCarville up off her feet. See right there, gets McCarville running out on the ball. She should have closed out. That's where you want a stutter step going out so you don't overrun it. Nice job by Lindsey Hicks. Big three-point play for Hicks. She took McCarville off the dribble and converts the three-point play, 54-47. And this is as close as Purdue has been here in the second half. Well, if you're Minnesota, you need to make sure that you take care of the ball on the offensive end. If you're Purdue, you don't need to press. And I mean pressing as in forcing shots or rushing shots. Waylon. And a foul called on, I believe, Pikes. Well, Whalen coming in to try and set up the spin. Tenth team fouls, so Whalen will have two shots. That's her first miss of the night. Well, Sharika Wright returning. Yeah, and Purdue has actually been picking up probably, probably the last four minutes or so, trying to speed things up a little bit, get the tempo back in their favor. Looking for her 34th point. She's got it. That matches her career high. Eight of nine from the line, 55-47. And the fans here into the barn starting to whoop it up. Eight point Minnesota lead. Hicks in traffic, out of bounds. Purdue ball. 13 on the shot clock. Nice rotation by Minnesota. Purdue trying to attack that baseline again. Hicks with the same move. Trying to dump it off inside to Hikus. Shot clock at 10, Camara to right, takes the shot, splits the defenders, put the ball on the floor and lost it. Held ball, it goes to Purdue. Well, if Wright would have been able to pull up for that shot as she split the two defenders, it was a great move, but lost the handle. Just went a little bit too deep on the penetration. Just three to shoot, Camaro will put it up. Underneath, it's knocked away. Minnesota has it. Whalen spinning, and an offensive foul call. 
I was just going to say, I could see it happening. She's pushing the ball, doesn't need to look to set it up. She really didn't have the break, didn't have the numbers. And that is Lindsay Whalen's fourth foul. 6.44 to go. And again, Minnesota doesn't need to push the ball. Camara. There's Wright, got it. Muscled it back up and in, and it's a six-point game. Well, it's good defense on the initial contest, but Wright following the ball, short on the shot, she comes up with the rebound and puts it up. And suddenly, Purdue very much back in this game. At 55-49, Lindsey Whalen in foul trouble with four. That's of no small concern right now to the Golden Gophers. Well, to some degree, Minnesota hasn't really been in this position before. Purdue very experienced. So in that situation, unfortunately, Whalen picking up her fourth foul. I know that the team learned from that possession. Look for different clock management from Minnesota throughout the rest of the game. Lindsay Whalen takes the seat. Hemberg, Von Wald, Prince, McCarville. And Leeser out there for Coach Brenda Oldfield. The Golden Gophers looking to protect a six-point lead. 8,639 here in Williams Arena tonight. The trap at half court. Ike has just missed the steal. Here's McCarville. Nice job in that press offense. Eva Hemberg did a nice job maintaining control of the ball. Good finish on McCarville's part. Eight point Golden Gopher lead. Hicks the high screen for Bilek. Back to Hicks for three. Von Wald right fighting for the rebound. But right there, Von Wald did an outstanding job of sliding in on the back side. Wright had position, but she slid in in front of her to be able to come down with that rebound. Second foul on, or third foul make that on Sharika Wright. And Von Wald will go to the free throw line. And again, you know, we talked about Von Wald being very subtle in how she helps this team, but it's huge in what she does. Ron Wald, the first attempt no good. Meadows back in, Noon back in. Out go Hicks and Hikus. Hicks with a very big play for the Boilermakers. Second free throw rattles home. Nine for Von Wald. 58-49. Five and a half to go. Wright steps in, fires, follows her shot, missed again, tapped in the air, Von Wald controls it. Big rebound for Minnesota. Well, and that's unfortunate for Purdue, Wright with two great looks at the basket, but a big rebound by Minnesota. Von Wald, or Wright fell down, got back up, here's Prince. And I was going to say who came down with that rebound, but Von Wald. Shot clock at five. McCarville on the drive. Finger roll won't go. The tip won't go out of bounds. Minnesota ball. Von Wald knocking it out of bounds. <laughs> right there, right off of Mary Jo Noon's hands. Right there, look at her keeping that ball alive. And Kamara steals the inbounds pass. 4.47 to go. Kamara first in the conference and steals. Comes up with a huge one off the inbound pass. The Lex jumper, good. And it's a seven-point game. A nice jumper right off the dribble by Vilek. Hamburg at the other end. Back to Prince from straight away. Big shot, she answers it. Back to a nine-point game. Well, Prince coming in, filling in out of transition, trailing, nobody picks her up. Nice shot from the free throw line. 
Open in the corner, Camara for three. And it's a six point game, 60 to 54. That time, Camara getting her feet underneath her. Nice use of her legs. Good looking three pointer deep in the right corner. Minnesota takes a 30 second timeout. With 4.02 to go, their lead down to six points. Let's take a look at Kelly Camara's three pointer here. Again, Camara running that baseline wide open on the corner. But again, much different timing on that release. And again, nice use of her legs. Kamara, her second three-pointer of the game. Remember also she had the steal of the inbounds pass. Kamara coming in, fourth all-time at Purdue in steals with 270 to start the night. Top 10 in assists. Over 1,100 points in her career. Minnesota breaking the pressure here. And now they'll take it outside. Whalen for three. Lindsey Whalen, a new career high, 37 points. And it's 63-54. And again, expressionless as she runs down on defense. Malek tried to answer, could McCarville the rebound. Lead pass for Whalen, ahead of the pack. Lindsey Whalen, 39 points. Well, this time checking the defense to see if she had the numbers. Nobody back on defense. Nice take to the basket. Time out, Purdue. Again, we talked about the clock management by Minnesota. When Lindsey Whalen picked up that fourth foul, I knew she learned from that. Both possessions by Minnesota have been very good in execution. Well, Kelly Mazzani had 49 earlier this year for Penn State. I don't know if there's enough time for Lindsey Whalen to get there or not tonight as she steps back and drills the three-pointer. And then here, her 38th and 39th points. <laughs> no change of expression. <laughs> <laughs> All business. Well, against this Purdue team, you still know it's not over. It's an 11 point game. New missed the turnaround. They've missed some shots from close in here in the last few minutes. Prince with a big rebound. Again, both with great looks. Wright had a couple of good looks. Noon with another one, but they're just not getting the, the touch on the shot. Dumped it off to Prince. Prince and Wright get tangled up. The ball out of bounds. And we have an official timeout. There's a timeout on the floor. 2.56 to go. Here at Williams Arena, Lindsey Whalen, 39 points. The Gophers with the lead. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 39. And you know, look at this. I mean, 14 out of 19. Eight of nine free throws, five rebounds. She's got to have at least four steals, three or four steals. Yeah, we don't get them on here. Uh huh. But the last. What's that? <laughs> That's only if he's playing hooky or not, right? Wait a minute, say Joe, not Jose, you said? Read the paper, not the graphic. So say Joe Cornejo. Okay. This game has been produced and directed by Jim Cordo, Jr.
Our associate producer, Joe Cornejo. The production manager, Moheen Ramsey. And the executive producer at Fox Sports Net Chicago is Dan Lafferty. Along with Tony Resch, I'm Dave Ennett. We have 2.56 to go. The Minnesota Golden Gophers with the ball in the lead, but they lose it. Underneath, Von Wald's shot was blocked. Meadows picked it up. Vilek ahead to right. Right to the baseline. In traffic. Put up the shot and drew the foul. Well, there was a triple team down low. The attendance tonight, 8,639. There you see the national attendance leaders. Purdue leads the Big Ten, averaging just a little more than the crowd in here tonight. This is the second largest hoops crowd in Minnesota women's basketball history. The first was the crowd of 11,000 earlier this year against Indiana here. 65-56. Purdue trying to get the ball with two and a half to go. Eleven thousand three hundred eighty-nine here on January twenty-seventh. Harbel, the shovel, whaling. May have been her most spectacular basket of the night. Forty-one points. Uh, how about the pass from McCarvel? Out of bounds, Purdue ball. Well, actually, that was a nice job by Minnesota because Purdue was doing it and putting a tremendous amount of pressure on Minnesota, not allowing them to get into their half-court set, but Whalen with the off-ball cut. Right. Tough shot. Got it. 67-58, 2.04 to go. Two minutes remaining. Well, Purdue keeps answering the call. Whalen has scored the last seven points for Minnesota. She's got it now. Outside Von Wald. That streak. 69-58. The nice composure by Minnesota. Timeout. 138 to go. The Purdue Boilermakers have not lost a game since January 6th at Iowa. The next time out, they beat these Golden Gophers, and they haven't lost since. The streak started with Minnesota. Right now, it's in danger of ending against the Golden Gophers on this Valentine's Day night. Minnesota has won five in a row, seven of eight, 10 of 12. And a win tonight would keep their Big Ten title hopes alive. Give them a big energy boost. In the remaining games for Minnesota, they have to go to Indiana, but then they're home against Wisconsin and Michigan State. And Purdue has a game at Michigan on Sunday. Then they close things out at home against Penn State. And of course, they've won 24 in a row at Mackey Arena. Camara from the corner for three. It hit the side of the board. Meadows got the rebound on the weak side. She missed it. Pikus put it back up. Missed again. And finally, Minnesota controls it with 120 to go. And a foul call on Meadows. Oh, that right there was a huge possession. Minnesota dodged a major bullet. And Laura Meadows just fouled out of the game. A good persistence by Purdue to keep the ball alive. Unfortunately for them, not able to connect on that. But Minnesota not securing the initial rebound was almost costly for Minnesota. McCarville at the line. One twenty to go, 11-point Minnesota lead. Missed them both. Hikus controls. Collect brings it down for Purdue. Camaro wants it on the wing instead to Hicks. All right, she'll take the three-pointer. 
Off the rim, kept a lot, Hicks put it back up, and rolled it in. Well, Heikis actually did a nice job of getting McCarville underneath the basket to allow Hicks to come in and get that rebound. Nobody there defensively as they break the pressure and McCarville finishes. How about the unselfish play by Lindsey Whalen? Timeout Purdue, and that may have been the exclamation mark right there as Minnesota goes up 11. And the mission for Brett Oldfield right now may be over the next few days how to get this team back down to earth for their game in Indiana Sunday, although they have managed to handle big games all year and come back off some big wins. Of course, they had the big victory at Wisconsin and then lost at Ohio State. That's the last time they lost. Again, we remind you that this year's Big Ten Tournament tips off Thursday, February 28th at Conseco Fieldhouse in downtown Indianapolis. For tickets, contact your local Ticketmaster or Big Ten Ticket Office or visit Ticketmaster.com. Come to Indianapolis and see Lindsey Whalen, Minnesota, Sharika Wright, Kelly Kamara, Purdue, and all the other outstanding players in this conference. Kelly Mazzani at Penn State. The list goes on and on. Well, we've talked about the super sophomores, but there is a tremendous freshman class. The Big Ten is going to be fun to watch over the next couple of years. Mentioned the current player of the week, Jenny Lillis, a sophomore for the Hawkeyes. That's another team that will certainly be heard from. 41 seconds, but left fires off the front of the rim, tipped into the corner. Right puts it back up, missed it. Hikus again had it. And then a foul called on the rebound with 32.9 to go. Janelle McCarville off the rebound, just tried to kick it out. Knew she couldn't secure it, but that set it up for a three-pointer by right in the left corner. We'll see the shooting, 50% shooting here in the second half by the Golden Gophers. 47% for the game, Purdue at 39%. It's a 10-point game, 32.9 to go. Von Wald fouled right away by Sharika Wright. Von Wald, one for three from the line tonight. Fourth foul on right. Now Minnesota averaging nearly 83 points a game, a little bit under that. But Purdue actually holds their opponent to 60 points a game. Well, the first time around, Purdue scored 84, held Minnesota to 61. Tonight it's Purdue with the 61. There's Sharika Wright. 72-61, Minnesota. Correct, the pull-up three. Saved inbounds. Von Wald has it fouled by Hicks. 22.1. A great effort by Heikes to try and save that ball. She actually went off the floor. Well, I guess the historians here in Minneapolis will be scrambling to the books and trying to assess the significance of this victory, where it ranks. Certainly, one has to think at the spur of the moment that this is as big a win as Minnesota has had in many a year. Certainly the biggest win of this memorable season. Kim Bell checking in. The senior for the Golden Gophers and Lindsey Whalen gets a curtain call on her career night. 41 points. Unfamiliar territory for the Boilermakers. Kamara off balance three and she got it with 15.5. Great looking shot by Kamara, comes off the dribble. 
Carvel into the front court. Bounces it past Bell. Wanted to let Kim Bell have a piece of this. <laughs> and why not? Uh, now start. Six seconds. Two seconds. Camaro will put it up. And the Minnesota Golden Gophers have defeated the Purdue Boilermakers for their 20th win of the year, their sixth in a row, and they end Purdue's nine-game winning streak. Keep the Boilermakers from clinching at least a tie over the Big Ten Championship. Minnesota wins it. We'll be back with more from Williams Arena in a moment. Gotcha. Good job. Now stepped on you a couple times during, but I thought we float pretty well throughout Look the game. Look at this. <laughs> What's that? Look at this. How many TV cameras are up? Minnesota wins it here tonight, 73-64. Oh, now what are you saying to me? I can't hear it so loud in here. I just figured I better start. <laughs> no, I don't have a clue what you said. What were you saying? This game flowed as well as the beer is going to going to flow. <laughs> there were six cameras out there. Minnesota wins it here. Be sure to come back Sunday when Illinois visits Penn State. Our Chicago viewers can see that one live at noon. Check your local listings for times outside the Chicagoland area. Now for Tony Resch, I'm Dave Ennett saying so long from Williams Arena in Minneapolis. The Minnesota Golden Gophers beat the Purdue Boilermakers 73-64. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports Net. Good night, everybody. Thank you.